Hello everyone. Now this is this lovely piece of work we're working on that's going to be a bag. And uh, in the last two parts we've looked at um, choosing our, our palette of colours and then our threads and just starting to join it on. And you can see we've got some lovely we've got some lovely bits and pieces. And right now we're going to take the stitching to another level. So one of the things that we had done in the previous one was this here. This line joining a few things up. We had also, oh, where is it? It's upside down now because this bag folds. There. So you can see we added this over the edge. Just a plain old running stitch. But because that was working well for me, you know, I've added some uh, yellowy green down there. And I've just started to do these nice wavy lines sometimes. Sometimes I'm straight and sometimes they meander and, and cross each other. Mainly because, see this piece here, it was like that. And I used a green, a green and yellow that's a a variegated, a pearl cotton, and it tracked through, that's my needle there, but it tracked through this pink and broke up some of that pink and it went up into this pink. So it's all about how you, you know, thinking of different ways to stitch things together. Um, I'll get back up this other end now. Sometimes I do several rows of stitching in the you know inside the edge on the edge outside the edge and look at this one here and that's where that one's led us up and doing this echo of this leaf shape here and up and I've just finished here I was putting a, a line across here just to touch that one in and I thought oh, I can extend it out into that petal so I did a few of those, and then I thought, okay, I quite like that, and I do some more. Yeah, so what I am doing is extending the design, I suppose, you know. Um, so here is where I was having a bit of trickiness. I did a, I did some lazy daisies, whatever they're called, daisies, with a chain stitch, and I tried to bring in a a bit of variegated and they're a bit messy didn't work that well but I'm going to use keep them there use them as a background I mean maybe that's a good place to pop a bit of a uh, bit of lace or you know button or something what have we got here you know we could have a little series of buttons I don't know where they are at the moment but you get my gist because what we're trying to do is get everything sewn down, but also to, you know, use it as a like a sampler to try different stitches. And that's why we've left these gaps. You know. Because sometimes we're going to extend the pattern out. Sometimes we're going to just enjoy the fact that uh, it's blank. Or we'll pop some, some buttons there or lace or whatever we feel like at the time. So right now I'm just going to fold it so you see the entire idea. So that one went up like that, sort of. And this one came down like that. And that there was the front of our bag. We made a good start on our stitching on this episode. We're going to finish that off. A few more ideas on how we can do that. But I'm liking it so far. I'm liking linking things up a little bit. I hope uh, you like that. Certainly different. But you know, this, I will still have to do edges, see? Although I've made that pretty there, I'll still have to do something up there. So I'll open it up again. You know, because it's folded, this bit is going 
that direction. This bit's going that direction. So, you know, it's something to keep in mind whilst I'm doing it. So from here, it's going up. I do have a few loose threads and things. Let me just pull them out when I don't when they don't suit. So I'm still thinking, you know, and I have to do something here. I have gone down that edge. You know, I still haven't done anything there. So there's still plenty there that I have to complete. But I like to meander from place to place and uh, get some different ideas in. And I've just finished doing that. Oh, it's really... Do I want that over the top? Do I want that under? I was really quite pleased with that. Just bringing that... And that's why I think it's really good to, you know, keep little tiny bits of fabric and um, see where they lead you. So I think we'll do some a little bit more in this middle section. So that's where I finished just there. Okay, I've done me knot. And snip. Now... Ordinary old stranded DMC embroidery floss two. Okay. Right, hold them one on each. I've got some there, some there, and I'm just gonna pull my thumb down and that way it'll unravel. Two out. I'm gonna start up here. I'm just going to try and bring some of that flower down. I just think if you're going to, you can do your straight lines, but sometimes it's just, it's really fun to do this. To think, how can I make that one come out here a little bit? Yeah. And because it has these stripes, it's going to work. I wonder if I could even go down there. Probably. Sometimes. And sometimes I'll go further up. Sometimes I'll just go at the end. And sometimes I'll use a different colour. But doesn't that look pretty? I think it does. I think we're getting somewhere. Can you see how I don't go, you know, I finished coming up here and I went underneath and brought it up a little bit further over, which just saves that little bit of um, cotton. I don't, I don't go back underneath all the way to here and then only go in that direction I'm able to go in both and I'll come back with maybe a white or maybe a, you know just something else maybe a more a more peachy color or something just something else So I'm managing to get this part of this edge done as well. You see, it's all nicely tacked down now. Just going to have a seam there. So I think a few more colours, and that will really look quite good. Let's just have a look here. So I had done those pink ones. I'm adding in some bit of white. I've also used the white to go through and attach that a bit better. Come over here outside the edge. And then I've looked at these sprays. Can you see? Little one, two, threes on them. And I thought I'm going to finish the rest of this thread off just doing a few little French knots. And I think one, two, or three, and back in 
there. Now I think that suits. I'm not going to try and do it over here too much because that's where my seam is going to be. One, two, three. Back in. Um, so I have big ones and little ones. These ones here are when I, I don't uh, hold it tight because I don't want to. Because I like messy ones. So just for you, I'm going to do one. So back in again. But instead of holding that tension on that thread now, I've just let it loose. Just let it do what it wants. That does a big messy knot, but does not look nice. So yeah, I think that's fine. That's just used up the last of that thread. Well, I probably want to use a pink and go around that one, and then that's pretty well all held down, that. See here? I've decided to go up and around that edge. See, I could also follow in if I wanted to and do bits there. And this is what's good if you follow some of the um, designs in the in the fabric because uh, it'll already tell you what to do. And this is a shiny thread as well, so that's going to be good. I've just been going around this with the dark green and that led me to go around that one and that one and then that led me to doing a little bit of stitching to you know bring that leaf in and then a little bit of seed stitch and a little bit around the edges to try and stop it from fraying and then I thought oh okay well I liked how that worked that defined it putting that around there. So now I'm going to have a go with the pink. Now I'm just going to get that up so that you can see it. Oh there we go. Can you see? Just that little tiny bit of stitching there in a slightly darker pink has really helped. I think that looks good. So this is where I've been working. Just going around the edges. I think it really adds something. And I think you know, that'd be a great way for people to practice by just uh, going around the edges of something you've already seen on a piece of printed fabric or embroidered fabric like this, you know. Because um, that's pretty well what I'm doing. And I've extended it over this folded up edge. So I was quite happy with that. And there's still plenty to do. I'll do that one, finish that. And I've had an idea for this little area here that I'm not happy with. Remember, I didn't want to undo it because I'm not really into undoing. Um, but whatever I do, I'm just going to let that be there and uh, add something. I'm even thinking I might look through some some interesting ribbons or yarns to couch that would be nice hmm. so that's couching and we'll get there I've done a lot of these edges now but I just want to mention other things I think we'll do that now because you don't want to see me going forever here I haven't used that yet I'm not sure how it'll be might be nice. It's only one way to find out, I suppose. Hard to tell sometimes on variegated threads how, like, look, it looks green, 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 and it's just a tiny bit of pink there. So it's mainly a light minty green, isn't it? Um, what have we done? We've done seed stitch. We've done 
some a few little French knots we've done running stitch or just any stitch a long stitch it's still a stitch a stitch is a stitch maybe we'll start here I just want to see how it would be if we just did some little crosses somewhere on that blank uh, background and also you know to hold things down a bit you could use something that would really show up. I was just quite interested to see uh, what would happen, what it would do to that background. So let me just do a few and we'll see how that works. Let's sum up in the pink. Now let's take it down into the background just see. So you can do little groupings of crosses or you can use crosses to go around an edge of something. You can take it to lead from one thing to another. Lots of uh, good uses for little crosses. It's nice to mix it up and not have all just the one stitch sometimes. And like I said, this is a good thing like a sampler that you could go, you could just keep going. Just keep going. Practice as many stitches as you like. So we've done that edge, we've done that edge, and we've, you know, put something in a little gap. Not that all the gaps need to be have something in them. But, you know, that's okay. And another thing we've tried. Um, oh, it does have this little pretty daisy in it. But it is quite colourless, although it's a beautiful, beautiful fabric. I just thought well, maybe we could do a bit like we did on the flap and you know, bring some colours in. Well, not a lot. I'm not going to do a lot. But I'm hoping with this variegated thread it'll look quite nice. So sometimes I'm trying to blend and sometimes I'm trying to make a focal point and sometimes like this, I'm being really subtle. So if you see what I mean, that's just a tiny bit, but it knocked some of that really bright stuff back into the background and brought the flower out. Right now, I'm gonna do some couching. So I've got that really interesting yarn, this other bobbly interesting yarn, and what else have I got? Oh yes, I love this. Um. But before we get there, uh, what else could I put there? Well, I was saying some lace, a doily like that would be really nice. Something, you know, over that area. But this is something that I have that I've had for many years and I no longer know what it's called. If someone does, let me know. So it's a woven kind of um, shiny, uh, very fine ribbon. But it's, it shreds and does this beautiful thing when you pull it apart and I think it's great. So a combination of those three, I'm going to have a go at, uh, at attaching with couching. Couching is just like this. I'm using two strands at, at the moment of, um, of a stranded floss. And I'm just going to bring my thread up with a knot behind, pop that first one in, and just attach it to get started. Now the idea of this is that I can uh, 
go underneath uh, to do to move along I can direct the yarn where I want it to be and then do these little bars little small stitches from side to side but smaller see how it drew that in bunched it up and drew it in where it was smaller I'm doing a two on top of each other and then I'm I'm heading further on directing the yarn where I want and uh, and attaching it like that sometimes you can make it uh, you can twirl it and make it uh, not as puffy see what I'm doing there that's that'll make it a lot smaller and sometimes you like it out flat let's just have a look here a little bit of yarn just couch down very simply little stitches and this larger piece this uh, wider braid see how it's bunched up in the bits that I haven't sewn and uh, every little while a centimeter however much you like I've made a smaller stitch and that allows it to bunch up like a lolly paper anyway that works on that I like that I sewed a couple of buttons on and I think I've sorted out that little spot that was giving me a little bit of trouble and that's what I mean I like to just go with it if there's an area I don't particularly like I'll just put something else there right let's have a look at this now I did one more bit of couching with this it's that ribbon that I like to pull apart isn't it delicious like a river like a river running through anyway what I did was little crosses can you just see if I can get that into focus turn it this way I did little crosses sometimes on the right hand side sometimes on the left just trying to catch in you know the, especially the bits where I'd pulled it apart yeah some bits aren't doesn't that look lovely though So the whole thing ends up like a story. One thing leads to another. It is a lot of fun, very creative. I hope you have a go. It's a certainly meditative stitch if ever I've seen any. So yeah, I think I'm gonna leave this project and leave that's the end of the series. The third part has been all about this lovely intuitive kind of stitching, decorating. Anyway, I hope you enjoy these last pictures to show you a close up of some of the things we've done. If you have enjoyed the video, don't forget to press like, subscribe if you want to, if you haven't already, and uh, I'll see you next time for something completely different. But this has been fun. Thanks again for watching.